Okay, this is uh, uh, Manoj, the... Uh, 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 yeah, you can do your surname. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even attempt it. Uh, who is uh, Debian Project Secretary and is going to tell us about multi-winner multi voting in Debian. Hi, guys. I appreciate you being here, uh, especially knowing that lunch has already started downstairs. I'll try to keep this short because uh, I try to do this a real multi-winner uh, voting strategy talk, and then I looked at the amount of math I would have to present, and I was able to narrow it down to about 120 pages of equations. And I didn't think I would fit it in, and I don't think I would have much of an audience left, so I decided it, I'll convert it into kind of a bit from the secretary, and where I think what the secretary needs to do should evolve. Uh, status as what's happening, thanks to the rest of you guys, uh, the secretary hasn't had much to do this year. Uh, we are no longer shooting for maximum GRs in 2008 like we were a couple of years ago. Uh, there has been some progress. We have a new victim who has decided to step up and become a, a kind of backup secretary, you know, in case I get hit by a truck or something. So Malkin has agreed to join in and uh, learn all about the ins and outs of what a secretary does, which thankfully isn't much. All, he, all we do is we run votes, we memorize the constitution, and have nightmares about it. Um, so, darn, this was a darn short talk. Okay. Uh, where should, okay, devotee. This is the software we use to run our words. It's not been packaged yet because I could never figure out how to make it a useful package because currently it is very tied into Debian. I mean, it's very useful if you have a GPG key ring and a PGP key ring, and people in the key ring also are in a LDAP database where they belong to a developer group. If you don't want to run a vote where you have these test criteria, devotee is not very useful for you yet. Which I never could figure out how I could package it uh, with a straight face and tell people this is something you might want to install. However, watching synchronized diving on TV in Spanish, a language that I don't understand, I had an epiphany. And I now have an idea of how I can modify, well, actually rewrite devotee. Uh, to be not just modular, which it already is, but also flexible, so that people can create their own votes with different workflows. They can plug in uh, verification methods, they can plug in vote collection methods. So, for example, if SPI uses a web front end, uh, there are a lot of people who have wanted to do, run votes using a web front end as opposed to email. Um, signed ballots. I don't understand why. I mean, sending email is so much easier than firing up Firefox. But similarly, there have been people who wanted not to use the file system as a database. They wanted a honest to goodness real database for, again, reasons that I fail to fathom, but it seems to be something that people really like. So I would like to take devotee the way it is, convert it into, uh, you can plug in your input methods, you plug in your own checks, decide which checks you want to actually run, which are just uh, non-mandatory, they will be advisory, hey, you didn't, didn't sign your ballot, but I'm gonna count it anyway, if that's the policy of your word. There, it would also be nice to plug in various ways of tallying votes. Uh, 
I really like the way we do our voting. It's uh, a variant of a single transferable vote uh, with satisfies all kinds of need criteria. But there are other ways of tallying up the vote. And it might be nice, and I think people have been doing this for DPL elections for the last couple of years. They take the raw uh, data and they figure out who would have been the winner under various forms of tallying up the votes. So, well, so now that I've taught Malkin all that needs, he needs to know about the current way of running votes, I'm going to go ahead and change it all out from under him. <coughs> Actually, there was a proposal that I received from a couple of people whom I shall not name, who said that when I took on the mantle of the secretary, our previous secretary had gone missing for two years at that point, along with a large chunk of money uh, that was never deposited. So he didn't take the money away, he just held on to the checks until they became invalid. Uh, which is why SPI was created, but anyway, that's the end of the story. Um, but then, devotee, the way we know it, was written under fire. In the sense that uh, when the DPL election of 2002 started, the only part of devotee that had been written was the part that accepted mail. The part that actually did something with the ballots were written a couple of days later, and the part that actually tallied the vote was done, I think, two days before the vote ended. Uh, so people have been suggesting that I just kind of yank out the current devotee, pull out, pull it out of all the public repositories, and then hand over the job to Malkin and let him start from scratch you know, proper training to be a secretary. Uh, he declined, unfortunately, because I think it would have been great training. Write your own vote-taking mechanism and, you know, everybody knows you can do the job. Um, darn, we're still only eight minutes in. Okay. I really don't have that much more uh, apart from the original topic of the talk, which is uh, selecting M members of a committee out of a set of candidates and uh, doing so while maintaining the characteristics of a voting mechanism that we already have in the Constitution. The voting process that we have has some nice it meets some nice uh, criteria. For example, uh, and this might be getting too much of a, into being a vote geek, anonymity. You want a voting system where it doesn't matter who you are, all voters are treated equally. So nobody is more equal than others. So no animal farm. Neutrality. That means that no candidate is more important than any other candidate. They're all treated the same by the voting system. We kind of violate this by because our further discussion or none of the above uh, option is slightly special in the sense that it cannot be eliminated. Uh, homogeneity, that means the results depend on a proportion of votes. We don't say that you need to have X number of votes and then you are in. It's, you need to beat the other options. Again, we kind of vo violate this by having the quorum and supermajority super restrictions, but barring that, barring if we have met quorum, we do meet this criteria. Then there are other little things, like majority, if a majority of the voters prefer some option over other options, the other option should not win. Uh, if there is a set of these things, so th if voters pre uh, prefer options in a subset over every other option non not in the subset, then the winner should probably come from the subset you know, that is ranked higher. Uh, there are, 
Well, there are other things like majority winners, majority losers, Condorcet candidates, Condorcet losers, Smith set. All of these basically come from the criteria I just told you, that is most people present, uh, prefer a subset over things not in the subset. The winner ought to come from the preferred subset. There are various ways of stating this. Uh, The other thing is resolvability. If you've got a small number of voters, it might so happen that you'll get two people with two candidates with equal votes and you can't really decide between them. But your vote mecha mechanism should be such that as the number of voters increases, tends to infinity, the probability that more than one winner would emerge should go down to zero. Uh, Pareto means that uh, if there is no voter who prefers candidate B over candidate A, but there is at least one person that can prefers candidate A to candidate B, candidate B should not win. I kind of like that. Uh, there is monotonicity, so that means uh, if you take a bunch of votes, and then you allow people to change the votes, and the only change they make is they rank candidate A higher. They do not change the ranking of the other guys, so they just take candidate A and move them up the ballot. The probability of candidate A winning should not decrease. And believe me, there are voting methods where that does happen. So we don't like that. Uh, say suppose you take a bunch of ballots where people have voted for candidate A. Now you increase the total number of candidates and you call them A1, A2, A3, A4. On an every ballot, the ranking that was given to A is the same as the ranking given to all these clones, A1 through AN. Then this shouldn't affect anybody else. So if candidate B was winning before, candidate B should still win. If some candidate C was losing before, they should still lose. The presence of clones should not affect the Jedi Order. Uh, so, if we go to multi-winner voting, all these properties ought to be preserved. My adi the additional criteria I put on whatever method we should choose is that if the number of candidates M degenerates to M is equal to 1, that means we want a single winner, the resulting method should be identical to what we currently use. Uh, there are also some additional criteria we should meet when we, have, we are selecting more than one person. Say, suppose you, are going, you want to select four people out of ten, and there is one super popular candidate you know is going to win. So if you vote for him as being one of the four that you want, you're basically throwing away a vote because he's going to win anyway. So this is called free riding. You know that your candidate of choice is going to win. You get a free ride by taking your vote that you normally have given to that guy and giving it to somebody else you want in who may or may not win. So you get one candidate elected for free based on your perception that he's going to win anyway. Uh, there are other, there, so there are other ways of free riding by not voting for the guy you want because they are going to win anyway uh, that apply to different ways of uh, tallying up the votes. And we want a voting mechanism that uh, is resistant to this kind of uh, voting. You can't ever eliminate it totally, but you make it so make it expensive in the sense that if you don't vote for the guy you want, he might not actually win. The other way that uh, people attack various voting systems is if you give preference to the number one vote that people cast. And there is a party, let us say that, um, oh, let me pick a proper evil subset. Say, 
the US subset of Debian developers decide that they want four US Debian, Debian developers to get into this social committee. And the vote tallying method is such that it pays special attention to the way you rank the candidates. Then what you do is you tell those Debian developers, you want these four guys in, one fourth of us should rank guy number one first, one quarter of us should put guy number two, two first, and then so on. So that one quarter of our evil American, North American or clique votes one of our, our guys first so that you know, we evenly distribute our votes so that increase the chances of those four guys getting into the committee. We want a vote system that, re, uh, that uh, this is called vote management. This is the simplest of the vote management techniques. There are other ways to do vote management. We want to have a voting mechanism that resists managing the vote by a subset of the people. There is also something called the droop criteria. Uh, so there is a droop ratio, which is basically you take the total number of votes divided by the number of candidates plus one, you get a ratio. An important criteria is that one such, say if the ratio is uh, X number of people. So if we want to select M uh, members, if at least X number of people put a subset of M as the preferred candidates in their ballots, for every X number of voters, one of their candidates should be selected. So in other words, uh, this is more important in um, you know, real politics when you have political parties. This is proportionality. That means if you've got two parties, or three or four parties, then even a small party which has only, say, 10% of the members should be able to get at one-tenth of their candidates in the final selection. So in other words, even a small group of people, as long as they are above the droop ratio, should be able to have a say in the final um, result. So it doesn't mean that the largest party gets all the votes all the time. Minority views are also represented in the committee, which I think is uh, one of the first candidates for this kind of voting method might be the social committee. I, I'm not exactly sure where that proposal stands, but I thought we were going to go ahead with it at some point. Uh, it, and there this was brought up whether we will be suffering from the tyranny of the majority or not. And if we manage to write the voting mechanisms as the group criterion is met, uh, we will not have that problem. So. I do have papers that allow us to select a voting mechanism that meets all these criteria. I wanted to print out that paper and bring it over, but it's 288 pages, and about 60% of that is pages after pages of mathematical formulae. I think I have managed to wrap my head around it. I have not yet managed to wrap my head around it well enough to actually implement it in code. I hope to be able to do so, say, before we manage to pass the GR that, wants, that uh, authorizes the social committee. I'll be happy to post links to all these papers. There are three of them out there. Um, somewhere once I get back to a working computer again. Okay, 20 minutes. I think I've kind of met the minimal criteria for how long a talk needs to be to justify it being here. So um, if you guys have any questions at all about what the secretary does or what we sh it sh the secretary should be doing, whether 
there's something that I could be doing better or if you got opinions on voting systems or you want to go delve into details of how we are going to do STV Condorcet multi-winner voting, I'll be happy uh, to indulge you. I've got several pages of math here for anybody who wants to go deeper in details. One quick question. Um, I think I brought it up during the last uh, TPL vote on the list, but I think I'll just try to ask again. Um, some people were posting their votes publicly, and th some others were replying saying, hey, what you're doing is stupid, and signing that reply, quoting the vote in full. If somebody would forward this uh, mail saying, hey, you're doing something stupid, to devotee, that would override the replier's vote, would it? No, it won't, because uh, this is essentially a replay attack, and devotee is resistant to replay attacks. You A replay attack would be sending the same signed vote back to the devotee. But okay. um, what he's saying is that one person sends a signed vote to Debian Devel, and another person replies to that vote with, you're stupid, and signs it with his GPG key. So that's a different signature, but the same vote, for that, but then for that person. So it's not a replay attack. It's actually a different vote as far as devotee is concerned. I think you're right. If somebody manages to grab, if the original signature has been stripped off, we do check to see if it is double signed. Yeah, okay, but usually if you reply, then the original signature is stripped off because you, uh, in any way you would quote it and, and, and mangle it so that it's a different message. Right, so yes, you're right. In uh, My answer to that is don't do it then. <laughs> I don't know how to prevent that, all right? I, d I don't know how to build in this kind of intelligence in devotee. Uh, Maybe a possible solution would be to share the set of um, verified signatures from Listmaster with devotee or something, because we do keep track of, or we can keep track of all the signatures that are val uh, validated to all Debian lists. Obviously, it doesn't stop anybody from doing the same idiocy to a non-Debian list, but typically they send to, send, tend to send them to Debian Devil because that's where all replies to announce go uh, if you're stupid, um, so. Uh, I, I, I don't think I follow. So somebody has sent in a vote. I quote it and I sign the quote. Right. And then the same thing is sent to the vote. Uh, right, yeah, the question is, because it would have already gone to a Debian mailing list, we could give you, oh, we have seen these signatures. Oh, so a replay attack, which is... Uh, this particular uh, one would, would be solved. Obviously, it wouldn't stop somebody from sending such a message to any other random mailing list, but... It's just an option, I mean. So. If you guys want to do it, but I, I think that we are happy with, yeah. don't do it then. I think you are forgetting that some people actually do sign, uh, do send votes to Devel and, and Secretary at the same time, and that would be a valid vote. So you would be rejecting those as well. Yeah, okay, but. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, I mean, it, it's, it's a whole can of worms, of, of course. So I, I think it's just better not to handle it and make sure people are not stupid by replying to votes and signing them. If you do want to do this anyway, please just delete the UUID, which is in the vote that you quoted. If the UUID disappears, then it won't be seen as a valid vote. So right, right um, I mean, I'm not saying we should fix this, but if somebody wants to fix it, one way would be to have um, unique UUIDs. So that, that you like send a mail or you get, a, as a Debian developer, personal mail saying this is your ballot and you can use it only once. And uh, then there would be no problem to send it somewhere else. But um, yeah, I don't know if it's worth the hustle. Probably not. I mean, people who do this, they are well, calling other people stupid, so they deserve it too. 
That's the word I've written. Yeah, it, that would be good if people actually followed the instruction, because now what this would require is... <laughs> see, what this would require is each ballot would have to be different. That means people would have to change the ballot and add a new UUID. Now, every election and every vote so far, even though the instructions say you've got to do in the square box, you put in one, two, three, four, and so on, in the order you prefer. I get at least three to four votes where people have just marked X. <laughs> so if people can't follow the, that kind of uh, instruction, I doubt it that we'll get everybody adding in their UUID to the ballot. So, uh, Nice idea, I don't think it will work for us. I have been, I think the last vote, there were a whole bunch of people who were telling me that my instructions that I put forth in for voting were too complicated for people and they should be more intuitive and there have been several rounds of wording proposed to improve my instruction set. And I must confess, I've kind of about reached the end of my rope. And I'm going to put my foot down and say, look, guys, if you can't follow these instructions as they exist now, I'm really not sure that you can understand the concepts of that you're voting upon and can actually help Debian by voting. Uh, I've tried not to say this, because this is harsh and rude and probably not something the secretary should be saying. But for heaven's sake, I mean, how hard are the instructions right now? Well, the other thing is I can say that the secretary will never create a new ballot. Whoever wants to, the DPL candidates can go create their own darn ballot if they want to get elected. And anybody proposing his GR can do the same. Unfortunately, while that sounds nice, I think it will end up with ballots that are equally problematic. Hi. Uh, some months ago, there were uh, proposals, uh, well, many messages about a certain voting system that uh, encouraged uh, strategic voting. Uh, personally, I, I'm, I I like that uh, Condorcet voting uh, mm, uh, go goes against that, uh, discourages strategic voting. What's your opinion on that? I, uh, it's not... Right, so Condorcet voting, th there is a mathematical proof that it does, uh, is resistant to most of the um, insincere voting uh, hacks that people have tried. Range voting, I'm not convinced, meets those criteria because every time I have asked that person to give me some kind of mathematical proof, all that I've gotten back is a lot of hand waving and saying that I'll give you examples in which it works that way. And unfortunately, you can come up with any kind of example Examples like that for every single voting system where for given sets of votes, for ballots, they do meet the criteria. But uh, giving examples and anecdotes is not actually mathematical proof. So that's what I, why I have not actually, beyond asking for clarification, I haven't replied to that person because uh, he has been extremely persistent and not very amenable to listening to what other people have been saying. Uh, but if you do have uh, some concern that our voting mechanism is not proof against some of these uh, insincere voting mechanisms, uh, you feel free to read up the papers that I'll put up uh, on that email that I'll send when I get back home. I do uh, have one concern, actually. Um, our voting system actually favors the compromise, which usually is a good thing. But if there are there can be cases where we have to do 
one of two things, which are both extremes, and some moron gets a vote on the ballot to do nothing, which is a bad thing, um, then this do nothing is usually uh, much more likely to actually win the vote because the people who prefer one end of the extreme will say yes, one first, and the other end of the extreme, I don't want that, and the middle one, well, okay, if nothing else. And the other end of the people will do the opposite. So the middle is much more likely, and I think that's, that can be a problem in some cases because actually our voting system prefers uh, of favors in decision, which I don't think is a good thing. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the voting system issue. I think the social issue. Yeah, maybe. So uh, maybe because the voting system can only do what uh, it can try to decide between people's preferences. If people are so polarized as to say that my way or the highway, that means my way and further discussion over everybody else's proposition. Uh, I don't think we can solve this mathematically. You have to solve it by having people talk to each other. Yeah, I think you have to be careful about deciding what's a problem and what you want to fix. Um, I actually consider it a great feature that if we are still in a situation where um, the overall opinion of the project is very divided, that further discussion, which is our way of phrasing you know, the, the choice that says we aren't ready to make a choice yet um, is in effect our default behavior. We're having a discussion last night, um, very late, um, about the tech committee, which uh, led to some interesting thoughts that I'm sure you'll all hear about before too long as soon as we get a chance to read our late night notes and figure out what we actually <laughs> said to each other. Um, but um, one of the things that, that came up in that process <coughs> is that uh, driving things to a vote um, in a particular time frame is actually okay because if we aren't yet to the point where we're prepared to make uh, a, a, a sort of a, a group decision, it may well be that the answer is further discussion. And that in effect is a, is a sort of uh, twisted way of saying, you know, we weren't ready to vote yet. And, and I think that we have to be careful because I think, as Manoj has suggested, some of these things are, are social issues, not you know, technical issues with the voting system. And in this particular case, if we have something that's hugely contentious and yet um, we need to make a decision, I, I don't think that'll be a problem. I, we've seen a couple cases in the past where you know, we've, we've come to a decision. I, I, if, we, if we have something where there are, there are two really sort of polar opposite choices, and the project's deeply divided, then not making a decision until we figure out an option that you know, leads to more social consensus is probably great. Actually, I like to create a sound bite here. Devotee is not a stick to beat part of the project on the head with. So if we are that divided, we shouldn't be changing our voting mechanism to ramp through a solution and disaffect a large chunk of the membership. Anything else? Any rants against the way secretary has been behaving? You seem to be mellowing with age, Manoj. <laughs> At the end of uh, the talk which I gave, uh, I did have Lucas uh, come up and ask if he, he, he had the view that um, sometimes it may be useful to be able to run polls on various different issues and if a uh, devotee could be adapted to allow unofficial polls. Um, do you think it's devotee's place to do that? The new one that I'm proposing, you know, the modular create your own workflow, sure. The way it is now, it has, devotee has been used by various people to run polls, but uh, it's kind of, the way the, the amount of checks that we do are kind of heavyweight. I mean, it's appropriate to run all those checks, you know, GPG check, LDAP check, etc., because uh, the Constitution wants us to do that for GRs and uh, leader votes. 
it might not be appropriate for anything else. If you definitely, if you want to just have people's opinions, uh, do we really care if they are DDs or if you know, it's a self-selecting uh, uh, group anyway? So you might as well want people uh, might want to have people who are interested in the topic as opposed to people who have been blessed by the pop proper penguin P. But sure, the new devotee should be lightweight enough that anybody should be able to do it. I am hoping that I might be able to add enough functionality that we might be able to offer it to our parent organization, namely SPI, to be able to fit in using their web front end and yet be able to plug in devotee and because I don't think that SPI currently has a multi-winner vote mechanisms that actually meet all these criteria. You know, the simple thing of select one winner, keep them aside, select the second winner by applying Condorcet sequentially does not meet several of the criteria. It does not mean, uh, meet monotonicity. It is, not, uh, it is resolvable, but uh, uh, I'm beginning to forget. There are at least, when I looked at it, there were at least three criteria of the list that I had uh, selected which were not met. Especially, I don't think it meets the Smith 2 criteria. So, uh, it would be nice if we were able to make it useful even for SPI. Because they, I think they do more of this select M members out of more than M candidates uh, votes. And I have had requests from all kinds of Linux users groups and who want to use devotee and I have had to say that I'm sorry. If you don't have Debian's LDAP mechanism, this is not going to be useful for you yet. I was actually, the reason it has been taking me so long was I was trying to create an automated workflow processor where you kind of describe a vote saying I want a vote in which I want to do these kinds of checks and I want to use such and such a tally mechanism and then I wanted something to compose automatically the order in which the checks were run and marshal all the data from one module to the other and do it all automatically and it turns out this is not an easy problem. I mean it's doable. The grid folks have already solved it but they have solved it with a monster set of packages called uh, Wings and Pegasus. I don't want to bring that into devotee. So I decided that I, if I needed to create a description of a vote and I needed to create a parcel that could read the vote and execute it, why not use a programming language interpreter? You know, the Perl is a fairly decent parser of these things called descriptions of a vote in the form of a Perl script. So I have kind of let go of my ambitions of doing a workflow generation system inside devotee and I'm just saying that if you want to create a vote, you have to write a Perl script. Uh, all the check methods are, will become Perl classes. Instantiate a Perl class, pass the ballots to it, and there will be example scripts that you can use to base it on. It's not as interesting a solution or elegant a solution as a workflow generator, but maybe the next secretary will take that upon and we'll have these features soon. <coughs> Anything else? All right. I thank you guys again for coming here. This was a fairly dull and boring talk and I do appreciate it. Yeah, one last word before we disappear. Uh, since it doesn't get said often enough, Manoj, thank you for many years of services to the Debian Secretary. I at least really appreciate it.